Hey everyone, Mr. Sujano here. In today's video, we're taking a look at the Raspad 3, a full-blown Raspberry Pi 4 tablet. Let's get started. All right, to kick things off, Sunfounder sent me the Raspad 3 for a fair and honest review, and that's exactly what we're gonna do here. The very first thing I see when I open the box is the instruction manual, and it's very detailed. That's a really good thing. Sometimes instruction manuals can be a little bit confusing, maybe poorly worded, but this one here is very straightforward, very easy to follow, and if you're a novice at this, you really won't have much trouble at all. Underneath the foam protective piece, we can see the Raspad 3. In the bottom of the box is a proprietary power supply. It's a very similar power supply that you'd see for something like a laptop. I was kind of hoping for USB-C here. There's also a ribbon connector and a piece that goes on the GPIO pins. Ethernet, USB, and micro HDMI cables. A fan, heat sinks and screws, and a fancy Raspad Raspad branded screwdriver. This is a nice touch. Measuring the screen of the Raspad for accuracy and it is exactly 10 inches. The entire glass portion including bezel is 12 inches. The thickest part of the Raspad in width is just under 2 inches. The thinnest part is just under 1 inch. On the back of the Raspad there is a slot for GPIO. The bottom of the Raspad has 5 screws holding it together. There's venting down here as well as a sticker that says remove SD card before disassembly. The left side side of the tablet has an ethernet jack, three USB 3.0 ports, an HDMI out, and that's a full-size port, a headphone jack as well as the power connector. On the front of the tablet we have nothing except some paint missing from the top right corner. On the right hand side of the tablet we have a micro SD card slot, a power button, shared volume and brightness buttons, a battery light indicator as well as a little notch out here to help open the tablet up once you have the screws out of it. The case of the Raspad is fully made of plastic. Opening up the Raspad is simple and straightforward. There's just five screws holding the whole thing together and the screwdriver they included is magnetized. I was actually impressed with how much this screwdriver was magnetized. I think this is my favorite thing so far. Opening up the Raspad and I can see everything is attached to the screen. The base doesn't have anything on it yet. On the underside of the screen I can see a ton of different things. We have the one PCB here that contains all of the ports on the side of the tablet and it already has heat sinks on it. On the other side is a PCB that contains the switches as well as the micro SD card slot. There are two very small speakers here and we'll test the quality later. And last but not least is this fairly large battery. They say it can power the tablet up to five hours and given the size of this that seems reasonable. Now I'm not certain about all versions of the Raspad but the version I have does not contain a Raspberry Pi. I had to provide that myself. Now, although this is named the Raspad 3, it only works with a Raspberry Pi 4. And the version I had also did not include a micro SD card, so I had to provide that too. To test out the instruction manual, considering it was so detailed, I decided to follow it step by step just to see how the experience is for the end user. And I can say it's very simple and straightforward. The first step here is to connect the ethernet cable. The second step is to connect the short USB cable from the Raspberry Pi to the Raspad. Step three is to connect both micro HDMI cables. Step four is to connect the double-ended USB-C cable. The fifth step is to connect this little micro SD card slot adapter to the Raspberry Pi and also to the Raspad. This is a really cool little device. I would say from a setup perspective, this has probably been the most difficult so far and it's not difficult whatsoever. It's just a little bit finicky if you're not used to ribbon cables. The next step is to screw the Raspberry Pi into the Raspad. Now this was a little bit awkward because the cables were pushing the Raspberry Pi all over the place. The easiest way to do this is just to put one screw in and then align the Raspberry Pi. Peel and stick the heat sinks to the Raspberry Pi. Now I already have one heat sink on my Raspberry Pi so I'm not going to take it off and put the other one on here. I'm just going to put the other two heat sinks on so I have three overall anyway. Next up, on the base of the Raspad connect the fan. You want the sticker pointing toward the bottom and this will direct the air outside of the Raspad as opposed to draw air in. And be careful when tightening those screws, it's really easy to strip the plastic. The next step is to connect the fan to the PCB on the Raspad. Then I recommend double checking to make sure all of your cables are plugged in correctly and close up the Raspad. Now for some reason on my Raspad the back closed up fine but the front wasn't closing so I opened it back up to check it out. I initially thought it might be this USB cable pressing the frame out but I was wrong. It turned out to be both of these HDMI cables covering the final screw hole. There are two little posts in here to put the HDMI cables around. I missed that step. After I moved 
remove those cables, the RAS pad closed without issue. From here, the RAS pad is basically assembled and ready to go with your operating system. You plug it in and let the battery charge, or you can just power it up right away provided it's connected to power. To power on the RAS pad, you long press the power button on the side. Truth be told here, since I provided my own micro SD card, I actually didn't know what OS was on here to begin with. And it turned out I had Raspbian on that micro SD card, so that's a huge bonus. Now the RAS pad does have its own operating system and we'll check that out in just a second but I was very impressed that the touchscreen worked right away and was very responsive. Fortunately, the Raspad doesn't need any special drivers, it just works. One thing I noticed almost immediately was the fan on this Raspad was extremely loud. I could hear it from across the room. Something was vibrating on the inside and it didn't sound quite right at all. And the fan wasn't working overly hard. I mean, my Raspberry Pi was sitting at just under 40 degrees Celsius, which is completely normal. I opened up the Ras Pad and the fan itself isn't too loud. I think it's just some vibration between the fan and the case. I had some double-sided foam tape laying around, so I put some on the base of the fan just to see if that would help with the vibration. The tape helped a little bit, but there was still some noise there. I'll give you a listen. I decided just to remove the fan altogether. If you find you do need the fan, another option here is to directly connect it to the Pi on those lower power GPIO pins. After sitting for a while here, the Raspberry Pi is running about 10 degrees hotter without the fan. If you're not stressing the Pi, if you're not overclocking the Pi, I think this is okay. Using the Raspberry Pi as a tablet worked very well. I was very happy with it, and that's mostly because it's a Linux computer. You can do a whole lot more on here than you can with a traditional Android tablet. The resolution on this tablet is 1280 by 800, so don't expect 4K video, but the video does show up fairly clearly. Overall, I was very happy with the video capabilities on this device, but it's not going to be as good as something like an expensive tablet. Mind you, though even a lesser expensive tablet something like the Samsung Galaxy Tab A7 which is 10.4 inches has a resolution of 2000 by 1200 pixels almost double this it is worth noting I found these speakers a little tinny they didn't have a whole lot of bass behind them now it's hard to capture in my camera here but I'll try to give you an idea when I increase the volume my voice does start to clip As for emulation on this device, I loaded up a build of Recalbox here and it worked very, very well. The screen didn't need resizing, everything worked great. Even for having a lower resolution at just 1280 by 800, the picture here looks crisp and good. Testing out the SNES on this and yeah, the screen looks really good. The picture doesn't fill up the entire screen, but it also doesn't look too awkward. Overall, this is nice. Here's a quick look at PPSSPP. Now I didn't resize the screen, this is just default settings. So overall, this doesn't look too bad at all. I also went ahead and checked out Raspad, which is the official operating system built specifically for the Raspad 3. At the time of filming, it's version 2.6. The image size is 6.6 gigabytes, and it was released back in November of 2020. Setup on this was really simple and straightforward. I just had to select my time zone and my language. The menu system on this one is interesting. Everything's on the left-hand side. There's a ton of stuff that's pre-installed. If you're new to the Raspberry Pi ecosystem or new to Linux overall, this should be relatively straightforward to get you off and going without really having to do anything. I will say though, not everything is configured perfectly. You may have to tinker around with a few settings to get things running correctly. Take for example, Minecraft here. If you increase the screen size, well, it just throws everything off. Now I will say this tablet does go into portrait mode if you want, and it goes into portrait mode automatically. And that's one of the good things about the Raspad operating system is you can rotate the screen and it'll adjust automatically for you. You don't have to worry about that part. But on Minecraft here, well, my experience wasn't that great. Touching the screen anywhere while playing this game just dug a hole really deep, really fast. It didn't really matter where I moved my finger around the screen. It just 
did the same thing over and over and over again. Even respawning and trying out a new game, well, the same thing happened. It didn't matter my touch combination here, it didn't matter anything. Minecraft just dug straight down. And also when the game was up, I couldn't click out of the game at all. I had to use a keyboard. And that was a little unfortunate. I couldn't access the menu on the bottom. I couldn't close the game out. I had to use a keyboard to exit out of the game. In fact, even with image magic here, my touches were a little bit delayed and when I tried to exit, I couldn't. Clicking the X on the top right hand corner of the program didn't do anything. Double clicking didn't do anything. Holding it didn't do anything but I was able to resize the window and that was really about it. Other than that, I had to bust out the keyboard again to close the program. As much as I wanted to recommend the Raspad operating system, I really can't. I enjoyed my experience on Raspberry Pi OS much better. Now let's take a look at the price of the Raspad 3, go over what I liked and what I didn't like about it to determine whether or not I recommend it. First up is the price. It's listed at $259. This does not include the Raspberry Pi 4 or a micro SD card, and it only works with the Raspberry Pi 4. Assembly was really simple and straightforward. If you're new to this kind of stuff, it should be relatively easy. I also like the overall feel of it. It felt like it was very well built. The tablet has a nice weight behind it. It's sturdy and I like the choice in ports here. I like the full size HDMI out. As for the battery life on this, using Raspberry Pi OS, I got about three and a half hours and that was with the screen brightness cranked. Screen brightness is one of the biggest killers of battery. So three and a half hours isn't too bad. When I was gaming, I got between two and three, and that's also because it was stressing out the Pi. And speaking of gaming on this device, I had a really good time gaming on it. The screen is only 720p, but at the same time here, it's a Raspberry Pi and you're playing retro games. You don't really need a whole bunch more than that. Using this as a media center also worked very well. And lastly here, using the Raspad 3 with Raspberry Pi OS in dual screen mode was great. I think it handles it very well. Now moving into things I didn't like about the Raspad 3. First and foremost was the fan. The fan included with mine was loud. It rattled around quite a bit. I could hear it from across the room. It wasn't a pleasant experience. It did work well though. It did keep the Pi cool. But at the same time, I just, I couldn't take the noise. So I removed it altogether. Fortunately though, it did work well without a fan. Secondly here, I don't like the fact that this doesn't have a USB-C port to charge it. It does require a proprietary cable, and that's a bit of a bummer. You can't just charge it with anything you have laying around. Thirdly, it's a little disappointing that the screen is 1280 by 800. I was hoping for a bit higher of a resolution. And last up here, I really didn't enjoy Raspad. I don't think it's ready for prime time just yet. I think it still needs a bit of developing, a bit of massaging. Some of the apps still need to be configured correctly. Uh, overall, I didn't have the best experience using this, but at the same time here, fortunately, it's completely optional. If you're new to the Raspberry Pi, I'd argue just to use the Raspberry Pi OS. I think it's an easier experience overall. So at $259, do I recommend the Raspad 3.0? The answer is it depends on your situation and what you're looking for. First and foremost, this does not include the Raspberry Pi or a memory card. You will have to buy those and that pushes the price of the whole setup up. For a sturdy all-in-one unit that looks pretty good for retro gaming, the Raspad 3.0 isn't a bad idea. For a nice clean looking all-in-one media center, the Raspad 3.0 3.0 isn't a bad idea. And lastly, for a tablet experience, if you're looking for something a little bit more versatile than a standard tablet, well, the Raspad is a good looking option that isn't too bad of an idea either. If you have a specific use in mind for the Raspad 3.0 and you don't mind the shortcomings, well, then I definitely recommend checking it out. Anyways, that is all I've got for today. Let me know your thoughts on the Raspad 3.0 in the comments below. If you like this video, leave a like. If you didn't like this video, leave a like. Hit that subscribe button, check out my other videos. Thank you everyone, take care.